I told you earlier this week about the Belfast Police Department conducting an investigation into a fraud case in Belfast, which is known as a grandparent scam. Police say a New York man was arrested in California after allegedly conducting at least 18 scams across Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts and Nevada. Police say victims lost an average $20,000 to $30,000 each. And this TV5 investigative report, Alyssa Thurlow, tells us how these scams work and give us, gives us some tips on how to spot them. Emergency scams or grandparent scams prey on the unsuspecting individual who wants to help a family member or friend in distress. Scammers call panicking and may say things like, I have been arrested, there has been an accident or a medical emergency, and they say they need money. Now, once that money is sent, often via wire transfer, banking information, or credit card to the con artist, experts say there's no getting it back. That's why we want people to be extremely cautious uh, if they are receiving a phone call, an email, or a text just to not give personal or financial information. Protecting yourself from a con artist can be tricky these days, especially when it comes to emergency scams, sometimes known as grandparent scams. A common version of the scam is when a con artist contacts a grandparent claiming to be their grandchild and asks for money. Sometimes a con artist will tell the victim that they can meet them in person to pick up the money. We spoke with Paula Fleming from the Better Business Bureau to hear some tips on how to spot this type of scam. Some common red flags would be if the caller's voice or communication style, if it's via text or email, seems different from your actual loved one if they're claiming to be. If the caller suggests secrecy and discourages you from verifying their story, for example, we've heard that a grandparent receives the call, says, please do not, not call my mother or father. I don't want them to know I've been arrested or I'm in trouble. That's a red flag as well. The BBB says there is also a new twist to this scam, which targets parents of college students. Oftentimes, scammers gather information on social media or other online resources to make their story seem plausible. Scammers are pulling factual information. So yes, the child has been unfortunately arrested and detained. Um, so they're pulling from police logs from the colleges. So, but then when they receive the PayPal or the third party 500 upwards to $3,000 to bail them out, they're finding out that it was a scammer just using factual information. Bottom line, experts say you should be careful not to overshare on social media. It's best to keep that information on lockdown. Only share it with close family and friends. Uh, if you're on vacation, share it after you've returned pictures and information. And lastly, if the caller asks you to send cash, do your homework to ensure that it is not a con artist trying to steal your hard-earned money. They oftentimes have a lot of information and a lot of the right answers, but that does not mean that they are legitimate callers or people that are, have the best interest of you and your family member at heart. The Belfast Police Department continues to investigate and say they are identifying more victims across New England each day. If you believe you have been a victim, you should contact the department at 338-5255. You should also report all scams to the Better Business Bureau using their scam tracker. Your reports warn others so they can avoid similar cons. We'll have a link to that on our website and mobile app. For TV5 Investigates, Alyssa Thurlow, WABI TV5 News. Now, if you have something that you would like the TV5 investigative team to look into, please send us an email at wabi at wabi.tv with TV5 Investigates in the subject line.